In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I made $2,280 mining cryptocurrencies in October 2022. Now, this income will just be for the month of October. This will include income from cryptocurrency mining, running cryptocurrency nodes, and any interest earned in decentralized finance, also known as DeFi. Although the DeFi space has been pretty miserable as of late, so I'm glad I don't have a large exposure to that area. I've also included estimates for some of my monthly expenses, including estimates for electrical costs, as well as VPS hosting costs for my cryptocurrency nodes, so that we can get an accurate picture of my net income for the month. One thing to keep in mind is I did not sell many of the coins that I mined this month. I'm really waiting till the next bull market and much higher cryptocurrency prices for to sell the majority of the coins that I mine. So hopefully in the future, the value of these coins that I've mined will be much more than they are today. I'd like to start off by caveating that I would consider a lot of these cryptocurrency mining projects as speculative mining. Risky business. My strategy with cryptocurrency mining is to get exposure to a large variety of different cryptocurrency mining projects, fully expecting that some of these projects will fail, but others will see wild success and will hopefully greatly offset any losses I do see in other projects. That's the plan? That's the plan. Now this earnings review is a series I've been doing. This is the sixth month in that series. I created a monthly earnings review playlist on my channel. I'll link that playlist in the description of this video below if you're interested in checking it out. As I've stated in prior videos, I'm not sharing this information with you today to try to brag about how much money I'm making every month or boasting about being in this project or that. I'm really sharing this information to hold myself accountable, to track my monthly income and expenses by project so that I know when to get in and out of specific projects when they become more or less profitable. I hope you can gain something from any insights I may provide. And as always, for disclosure purposes, this video is not financial advice. Remember to hit that like button if you enjoy this type of content and subscribe if you've not already done so, so you don't miss out on any future videos. All right, on to the numbers. Let's start off by looking at the high level October numbers in comparison to prior months. So for October, we had total revenue of $2,280. Uh, that is down $265 from our September numbers. Uh, and that's largely driven by a decrease in minor revenue month over month of $349. And really what's driving that is my MXC sales. Uh, at the beginning of October, I believe on October 3rd, I sold uh, all my accumulated MXC that I had accumulated from my MatchX M2 Pro miners. So because I sold that those coins, uh, my future earnings for those miners are much less going forward. They go from $10 a day for each miner down to about $2 a day per miner. So that's really driving the decrease in the miner revenue uh, month over month. Uh, we had a slight increase in our node revenue, and that's really driven by some increased profitability I'm seeing on my pre-search nodes month over month. And then DeFi is slightly down versus September, and that's really driven by uh, yield nodes, uh, basically not getting a return for yield nodes for revenue because they have suspended withdrawals for the month. I've done videos uh, recently on my MatchX M2 Pro sales and the yield nodes withdrawal halts if you're interested in learning more about those. Uh, my expenses month over month were pretty much flat uh, at $581 for October versus $549 uh, for September. Uh, my electric rate has stayed consistent month over month. So my net income came in at $1,699. That's a $297 decrease versus September. And you can see down below here, now that we have six months of data to look on, uh, we are really seeing fairly consistent revenue expenses and net income numbers uh, over the past three months. But we are seeing, I would definitely call this a, a downtrend over the last six months. And that's really driven by some decreased profitability on some of my uh, ASIC miners that I own, um, but also the prices of cryptocurrencies have really stayed uh, pretty stagnant and in this bear market territory uh, for pretty much six months now. So really results that I would expect uh, given the current market environment. Next, let's look at my net income by project for the month. If we scroll down here to the bottom, you can see the totals here on this page match uh, the previous amounts that we had just reviewed. So my number one project for the month is my pre-search nodes uh, that moved up two spots from number three to number one. I now have 82 pre-search nodes. We had two additional nodes spun up this month uh, for a net profit of $554. Now I am seeing some increased profitability in my pre-search nodes over the past several weeks. And I think that's partly driven by a decrease in the pre-search price, but I know the pre-search team has previously said on AMAs that they really try to increase the, the pre-search reward amount when we do see a sustained uh, decrease in the pre-price because they want these pre-search nodes to be profitable for people to run. 
number two project has stayed consistent and that's my flux nodes i still have two nimbus one stratus and then i did do a tutorial video last week uh, spitting up a titan node as well so number three on the list is my MatchX m2 pro miners uh, this was my previous number one project um, i have two of these miners still and really was driving the decrease in the uh, net profitability for these miners is I did withdraw my accumulated MXC tokens near the beginning of October. I did do a video on this if you're interested in learning more about that. But really that sale will decrease the profitability of these miners going forward. But I thought it would be prudent for me to sell at this time um, really just to try to generate some cash for um, other purposes and investments. Number four on our list uh, that moved up is uh, Coinbase staking of my Ethereum. Coinbase did increase uh, the yield on this. I believe it went from about 3.2 to 3.8 for the month. So I earned about $76 there. Uh, number five on the list, which has moved up uh, pretty considerably, is my Hyfix Geonet station. This is a space weather station. I, I also did previously a video on this uh, a couple weeks ago, and this one has been a consistent earner so far, but it's really only been online for about a month and a half now, but we're earning just over $2 a day uh, currently for this miner. Uh, number six, this has been one of the most consistent ASIC miners that I've owned, and that's my three iPolo G1 mini miners, earning me a net $72 for the month. Now, I, I have started testing. Uh, I moved one of my... I pulled you on many miners um, to solo mining grin uh, earlier this month. Um, so I'm going to wait for a one month of uh, activity on that. And then I'll share my results uh, that I'm seeing with solo mining with grin uh, with you guys. But number seven on my list is my step in NFT shoes. Really, these shoes don't provide a whole lot of profitability, but they provide me good exercise and I get to walk my son and listen to YouTube generally when I go for my walk. So I enjoy this even though I it's not a big money maker for me. Uh, number eight also a DeFi project uh, drip. Uh, this one the price of the drip token has continued to fall over these past several months making this project less and less profitable but we're still generating a small amount for this. Number nine is my Gold Shell KD Box Pros. I have six of these. Uh, we really are seeing some decreased profitability from these miners. The amount of KDA that I'm receiving every day it has fallen pretty substantially over these past several months as uh, there's been some new KDA miners that have come out that really uh, have a really high hash rate. So it's really putting some strain on some of these uh, smaller, older miners. Number 10 is my five Helium Bobcat miners. These We've also seen uh, quite a decrease in uh, their earnings over the past year. So they're netting me $41 in helium for the month. Number 11 is the Deeper Connect Mini. Um, this one's been a consistent earner for me. Um, I'm at a credit score of 835 now. So I'm earning 164 Deeper tokens per day. But we have seen the Deeper price consistently fall uh, throughout this year. So it's really not generating net very much, but it's $41 for the month. Number 12 are my Gold Shell Mini Doge Pros, uh, netting me $15. Then we have the Gold Shell ST Box netting ten dollars number 14 is the exa miner uh, this is still on testnet but as of this morning i have 590 gigabytes of space used uh, so generating estimated rewards of just under ten dollars for the month number 15 is my gold shell se box now i had switched from mining sidecoin with this miner to switching to se prime near the end of september so this is our first full month of mining se prime for a complete month uh, with this miner generated just under six dollars number six 16 is the Gold Shell HS box. I had switched from mining Handshake uh, and I actually just switched that over to mining SE Prime yesterday on October 31st. And then number 17 is my Block Unlimited. That's really not generating very much. All right, number 18 is the Gold Shell Mini Doge Miner. Now this is different than the Gold Shell Mini Doge Pros. This is the earlier version of this miner. I have currently nine of these online and running. I plugged them back in on October 29th when we saw a big run up in Dogecoin's price, which made these miners profitable again to mine with. I do have one miner down. I may release a video on uh, why that miner is not working uh, here shortly. Number 19, uh, I have his red, and that's to the graveyard, and that's yield notes. As many of you may be aware, yield notes suspended all withdrawals for the foreseeable future, and they're doing a complete restructuring of the project, and they announced that uh, near the beginning of October. So for all intents and purposes, I'm going to put this to the graveyard because it'll be a long time before anyone sees their money again. And 
the amount of money that they'll actually see from this project, uh, I think is still up in the air. The next three projects here, my Helium Bobcat 500, which is 5G mining, uh, my Weather XM and my PiFi with my Aware Element are all still on testnet, so we're not currently seeing any earnings for those. Then here at the bottom, we have the Gold Shell CK box and the Gold Shell LV box. Um, they currently are showing as net unprofitable, so technically I probably should shut these down, but it is close to net zero that I'm just going to keep them online for the time being and watch them. And if, if we do see some decreased profitability in those, I may end up turning those off for the time being. And then last on the list is the future bit Apollo Bitcoin miner. This miner has a net loss of $5.44 per month, but I'll really probably keep this miner online continue to run it for the time being just because I like the prospect of running a full Bitcoin node and mining Bitcoin uh, from my home. I had three changes to the miner graveyard for the month. Uh, number one, I was able to repurpose the wear element that we'd previously been using for Planet Watch, and we repurposed it for a new project called PiFi, which is still on testnet. I did a video covering PiFi in terms of what items you need to set it up and how to set it up if you'd like to learn more about that project actually see here up in the corner, I actually do have my wear element currently running and it is connected to the PiFi network. Our next change is the Gold Shell Mini Doge miners, which I mentioned earlier, due to Dogecoin running in price, these miners are now profitable again to run, so I have those back on. And then finally, yield nodes, uh, that's our new addition to the miner graveyard. And they had suspended withdrawals in early October. And I think they are solvency risk going forward. So I think it's doubtful that that project will be generating income for people again anytime soon. Uh, one other thing I am watching is my Bitmain Ant Miner L3 Pluses. We do still need to see a quite, quite a bit bigger run in either Litecoin or Dogecoin for those miners to be profitable again. Uh, but really, I probably won't be turning those on anyways uh, because they're very loud. They produce a lot of heat. And my 240 volt circuit that I have uh, in my basement running my mining farm is near capacity already. And if I were to plug those in, I'd have to choose some other miners to unplug. So actually a pretty good month for the mining graveyard. I think this is the first month we've actually seen uh, more projects removed from the graveyard than added. And then next, going through some of the pending projects, I am still waiting on my six S19 Pro 110 terahash Bitcoin miners, which I'm having hosted. Um, I'm still waiting for those to consistently be online and running. Uh, they were initially online in October, but the hosting provider has had some issues with their generator. Um, so I'm hopeful that'll be up and running here in November. I have two Demo data miners, which are in route uh, to be delivered here within the next day or two. So I'll probably do an unboxing and initial review of those miners um, here in the next couple weeks. And then finally, we have a, another project and I'll be doing a giveaway, um, but that'll be dependent on when I receive that miner. Um, but hopefully we can get that video out to you guys here in November sometime as well. So there's all the different projects for the month. If you have any questions or want me to do any update videos on any specific project, uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'd be happy to cover them if there's enough interest. If you're interested in learning more about at-home cryptocurrency mining, check out this video over here.